Good afternoon, everybody. Um, we are the team that's designing the window cleaning robot. My name is Marco Montalvo. Uh, Paul Fieri. Zachary Marshall. And I'm Daryl Monsler. All righty, let's get started. Okay, so problem. We live in Vegas, so there's a lot of um, high altitude buildings, and they all need to be maintained. And by that, we mean clean. Um, so casinos usually hire window cleaners. Now, well, the problem with that is it's one of the most hazardous jobs that there is. Um, malfunctions in the harness could result in the fall of several stories, as well as if a clean platform is used, um, spilled soap and water could make the platform slippery. On top of that, you got power lines and strong winds that also pose potential hazards. Um, so our project proposal is design a robot that replaces the human factor and makes cleaning therefore simpler. We want to make it faster and efficient to clean windows in, in hopes of lowering cost. There you go. When it comes to our customer base, we've seen about uh, two basic um, customer bases that will benefit from this. And that is, one, the businesses which actually own high-rise buildings, and two, the businesses that are in charge of cleaning high-rise buildings. Um, there's also the possibility that it is much easier to downsize a product than it is to upsize it. Um, if we create this for a large high-rise building situation, it could be downsized and remodeled for residential purposes such as cleaning individual household buildings. Um, in terms of probability, assuming that we can create a model which cleans a window as effectively or more effectively than a human worker, which I believe the current model is 20 or so square meters um, of windows washed per hour, then it would be more profitable for companies to retrain their workforce and purchase this product um, in order to replace the human factor and increase the safety of the worker. And again, assuming that it can be downsized afterwards, it can also be marketed to residential areas. When it comes to the feasibility of the product, however, um, a lot of what we're working with is the pulley system that's already in place for scaffolding, used for window washers, which means that we won't have to design much than, other than the actual window washing system. Um, and there are a lot of other similar products that are already in the development stage that we can look at and say, how can we improve this model? How can we make it more effective? And how can we make it cheaper? OK, so our customer requirements. Fairly simple. You need a customer that has a high building and their building is made out of windows. That's fairly easy in Vegas. We got the Wind Hotel and the Encore Hotel, two examples of buildings that are primarily made out of window panes. So, next one, please. Okay, these are the, our design challenges that we're facing today. We need, well, overall, our overall function needs to be a window, um, I'm sorry, a robot that can clean windows efficiently and as effectively as a human worker. We need to design a mechanism to raise and lower the apparatus efficiently. We already decided on the rappel system that's going to, um, as well as uh, implement it with a control system that will keep the window, the window cleaning robot stable. It won't, as it won't, like, sorry, um, it will just clean. It will just keep it stable. It won't make it oscillate back and forth. It, it'll, we use a control system to keep it stable. And we also, um, on the coming weeks, we're going to test several window cleaning techniques and see which one is more efficient and, and implement that in a robot. We also need to design a mechanism that can drive the robot efficiently. Um, our two options right now are either a squeegee or a high pressure, high pressurized air to blow the water off of the windows. We also need to design a chassis that, um, that can, that can um, be resistant to strong winds. As of right now, we're thinking of a reverse airfoil. By that, we mean that instead of the air, instead of airfoil, like how airfoil lifts things towards the air, we're going to make it reverse it so it pushes the robot against the window. Okay. So Marco went over a lot of this already, but pretty much our, when we're designing this, we're going to do two parts: something to actually clean the windows and something to actually make the robot move across or down the windows. So those are our two main functions of this robot we're going to have to do. So uh, as far as how we're going to make it move, like we said, we're thinking about a pulley system. Uh, there are other systems out there, like uh, you'd have like a suction, 
a semi suction to the to to the windows, and then you'd have wheels so it could drive around, and you have pretty much this suction so it keeps it affixed onto the window. Uh, I, I don't know if you guys seen those YouTube cars or whatnot. They're driving on the walls and driving up the ceiling. So we were thinking something like that initially, but then safety issues with that. If like power failed, that would probably fall off. So we were thinking just keeping it simple. And uh, since most of these buildings already have some type of pulley system attached onto them for their window cleaning service, maybe we're just retrofitting their hotels. And instead of using people descending, we're having a robot descend on their whatever pulley system they already have affixed onto their buildings. So our cleaning systems, you know, we could use a spinning brush and spray uh, high temperature steam uh, on the window, or we're even thinking about maybe a robotic arm that uh, mimics already uh, the human and how they clean the windows. So we're, we're still we're going to do some research on what's the most effective way on cleaning a window, pretty much, and what's you know standards right now. And uh, some simple conceptual drawings. Uh, I'll have Paul explain. I'll, I'll just hold it. Sorry. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, the the first drawing uh, it would use a a stream of pressurized air to uh, blow the water beads off the surface of the window, um, so that there'd be no streaking or water spots of any kind. And uh, the second one is basically two uh, squeegee blades that are spring loaded and to provide pressure on the windows and uh, the robot will move and it will it'll just wipe the windows off. Next, Next slide. And uh, this one right here, uh, it, it, it models the way a professional win window washer would wash a, uh, a window. First, they, uh, they, they scrub the window uh, with, uh, with just a soap and water solution and, uh, and they wipe the, the section of the window in in one in one sweep, one efficient sweep, and we're hoping to emulate that. Um, but again, we have to test uh, several ways of cleaning windows to see which one works best and which one we should focus on. So some history on the window cleaning that we just looked up real briefly. Uh, for uh, the methods done by hand right now, uh, they're either Using for smaller buildings, they build a temporary scaffold. And, you know, they just stand on it, and pretty much clean it, go up a floor. And the limitations with that, you can't really have a high building, so this is limited to smaller offices and whatnot. And then you have uh, descending platforms, so it'd be like one platform lowered by ropes and pulleys, and they'd stand on that and they clean the windows that way. Uh, what Marco said with the dangers of that, you know, they can slip and fall off the platform. They do have some type of restraint system, but you know, safety still with that is questionable. And then uh, the other method, uh, some were terming as a bosun chair. This was a really simple uh, repelling system. It'd be like a wooden seat, pretty much. And they'd be, one person would sit on this seat, and they'd uh, lower it bit by bit with their cleaning tools attached. I wish I put a picture in, but uh, if you YouTube it or Google it, uh, you'd see pretty much what this chair would look like. Uh, they had had an episode of what, Dirty Jobs, how they showed uh, how win window cleaning was done. And that's pretty much the method they were using. And their cleaning techniques, Paul went over it. Usually the simplest technique we've seen is they have a one sponge, they run that over the window, and then they squeegee it afterwards. So I think the, the key factor in cleaning these windows was to dry it quickly, so not to leave watermarks. And uh, that was the best way to do it. Uh, some of the similar designs that are out there right now, since you know, uh, going on feasibility, this is a lot of people are working on cleaning windows. This, uh, this machine developed by the Swiss, they're calling it the Gecko. It uses these plunger cups to stick onto the window, and they would rotate. There's several, so when they rotate, that would move the bot forward or turn the robot, and they have a brush on top. So with this design, it's, it's a lot more complicated than what we were thinking, and this would probably be heavy and quite costly, so we're trying to do something uh, cheaper than this. And uh, we've seen videos on this. It's, it's kind of slow. They uh, say it's rather quick. But the videos itself, it's kind of slow. And I think actually a human would probably. It's also uh, very extremely loud. Um, sorry. Uh, the suction method that's used for it um, with pressurized air is extremely loud, which is another factor we want to remove is to not disturb uh, the inside of the building. If you're in an office in a high rise building, window washer comes down, it's normally not a big deal. Um, noise is not an issue. But when it comes to a high, level of suction and using pressurized air, if this went over your window, 
it would cause a great disturbance, and we don't want something like that. Uh, this is another robot. Uh, I guess Israel made. Uh, it's called the Skybot, and uh, this, this picture really doesn't serve it justice. But on the other side of this robot is a, a brush set. So pretty much it ha hauled this up or down the building, and the brush would move against the window to clean it. You know, um, really what we're questioning on the air is how effective does it clean the window if it's just a rotating brush? Because from this picture, it just looks like it's just resting on the window versus affixed it to the window. And there's still, you know, the different types of windows, different cases and whatnot. This is uh, the Windoro made by Koreans. This is not actually designed for high-rise buildings. This is uh, was designed for small home use or office use or possibly even uh, like their mall windows and whatnot. Pretty much, it's uh, this unit it would exist on both sides, so it, it could stick to the mag uh, to the windows using magnets. So the magnetic force would hold the two units together, and uh, on the bottom of the unit was our cleaning pads. So as this travels through the window, because it's like a little uh, remote control or like a dia, uh, what is it? The Rumba vacuum cleaners. Have you ever seen those? The small vacuum cleaners that clean the floor by themselves. It's pretty much that, but on a window. So this is only for home use, and we're trying to do it for you know our hotels here, our casinos, so a large scale. So that's the only problem with this one. Uh, this is our timeline, still tentative. Our weeks one through four, we were trying to decide on a project. Uh, we ended up with the robot cleaning project. Uh, so this week is our week five. Our, it's our first presentation. We're trying to do uh, our research on the windows. We're going to have that settled out this week so we know where to go on fires how we're going to design this robot. So as soon as we find an efficient cleaning method, we're going to go with that and try to put it into a design. So week six, that's going to be a conceptual design. Seven, we're going to try to an analyze uh, these several designs, pick out which is the best one, do some modifications in week eight, you know, kind of hammer it out. So uh, hopefully by nine, we have some drawings done. Uh, th the, this is where in our second presentations do. As I, as I think you said week 10 on the syllabus. So. Uh, that's when we're going to have our presentations. Uh, 11 to 4, that's where we're going to try to really fine tune the thing. We're going to have to reevaluate the design, pretty much do some modifications, finalize, and everything. And then by the week 15, uh, we're pretty much done. That's our presentation and a report for our project. So, questions or anything? Absolutely. Uh, what I'm mostly curious about is the uh, pulley system you guys are going to use. Right. It, what I'm wondering is, is it going to be like just a vertical one that lowers up and down and somebody moves it over? Or are you going to have like a the plan was uh, the plan is to try and keep it simple so we're going to deal with just a one axis um, up and down like current scaffolding um, if possible we could implement um, an XY system which would just be uh, moving the pulley to side to side but in a high wind situation uh, that becomes really hazardous because as it's moving left and right can possibly knock into a window and cause some damage just something that we really want to avoid um, with the one access system, uh, it still requires one at most two people to use, uh, which we're you know trying to keep it low on uh, the number of people that are needed to operate it. Yeah. If there are no other questions, that's it.